Hey, what is going on, my fellow Raiders, Doomers, Crusaders, and Scullies? It's your fearless leader, Morgan Love. And guess what? It's show until Saturday. And I'm here, uh, uh, actually, I, I really don't, I really don't know where I am. Um, Split up, you know. Yeah. Confuse the Javitos. Yeah, that's how temples usually work. You yeah. split up and then you end up coming back in the middle. Why do they do that? I don't know. It seems counterproductive to make two hallways that end up in the same place. It makes for a good movie. Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, I'm here with Nathan Smith Finley. Hi, everybody. Your other fearless leader. So, today's show and tell Saturday is very right. special and one that I've been wanting to do for a long while because this is not my usual gear. I mean, some of it is, some of it isn't. I'm rocking a Temple of Doom build today, as to where Morgan has his classic Raiders, but with new elements of gear. That's right. And so we were going to do a gear breakdown, because people have been asking me forever to do an Indiana Jones gear breakdown. Love it. And so I felt like today, we could look at this beautiful new West End. Yes. To get up in the gear and talk about it. Yes. So why don't you go first, since you're technically the first film in the franchise. Great. Fantastic. Well, here is an exclusive 2022 update here at the old Los Angeles Zoo for my Raiders of the Cla Cosplay, Raiders of the Lost Cosplay, or Raiders of the Lost Ark, if you will, get up. Um, starting from top to bottom, we have my classic Herbert Johnson poet, uh, made by the lovely Michelle and reblocked by Jimmy Pierce, and also reblocked by Trent Ryan. So this hat has seen. Quite a bit of adventure, and uh, recently in the rain, um, I was able to shape it even more, and it's just it just sings and uh, flanging it and everything like that. It just for my giant 61 and a half head, it just fits wonderfully. So thank you all who helped in uh, yeah, putting a hand in making this hat. And as far as the jacket is concerned, you saw on my last show until Saturday. This is my brand new, well, brand new to me, Bill Kelso Relic Hunter, courtesy of Trent Ryan and Andreas Agrelli, mm -hmm. because he owned it before Trent did. And we don't know who the original owner, original owner is, probably Harrison Ford. Um, but it is a beautiful jacket, it fits super well, and I love it to death. Underneath, we have a costume based shirt. We have a spade archer leather costume based shirt that was weathered by Kirk Brockman. And if you want your shirt weathered by Kirk Brockman, contact him directly and he will be more than happy to satisfy your needs. I love this shirt and arguably, I think that this is a, a better look on me than um, most people who wear like Azumas. Yeah. So I love it very, very or much. Or like people like me who wear one price shirts. Yes, exactly. And uh, so yeah, like I said, I love it to death. Spade Archer Leather, Roger Brad Case, bag strap. Bag is a vintage World War II HSA, real Mark 7 gas mask bag. Love it to death. Still smells like the Haunted Mansion. I should play a drinking game on how much I say love it to death. Yeah. <laughs> They'll probably be belligerent by now. We have brand new What Price Glory pants, trousers, if you will, perfectly hemmed. Are they the heavy or lightweight? They are the heavyweight. Ooh. And they feel like a weighted blanket, but even so, I still love them to death. Shots. And uh, they, you know, they can withstand being dragged under the truck. Oh, yeah. Let's put it that way. And still rocking my Thursdays, my Thursday diplomats. I recently acquired a brand new pair of Alden 405s. Super pumpkin colored. Very pumpkin colored. So I'm still in the breaking in process. So I wanted to wear my Thursdays because I know they're broken in and they're well loved. Uh, my holster is actually an anonymous person. It is an eBay find, also got from John Ryan. And the leather grain on this is absolutely lovely. It is lovely. Um, it, yeah, I hope the camera picks it up very well, but um, it, it's absolutely wonderful. And on the inside, not a real gun, disclaimer, this is an artsy one, model number one, Bapti Smith & Wesson 1917 resin revolver, or as I like to call it, the Smith and Resin revolver. And uh, it just fits very well in the holster, it satisfies all my needs, and I, again, love it to death. It's fantastic. It is fantastic. Who made your gloves? Gloves are jonesing for props. Brian Long, he has sourced gloves that are dead ringer for Wells Lamont's. 
and uh, between 11:23 and 11:30s, and he distressed them for me, and I just they they just fit so well. They're so comfortable, and if you could see on the inside of this palm, it has the large stamp on it, which is indicative of well souls. Well of souls. I mentioned that in my review of my Jonesing for Prop gloves. I will leave a link in the description or the little icon above where you can watch that. Exactly, exactly. So these gloves are absolutely wonderful. I love them very, very much. And uh, again, love them to death. Uh, let's see, the whip that I have in my hand is a whip that is on extensive loan from Mr. Kirk Brockman. This is a vintage, two, early 2000s, a David Morgan bullwhip. And it is an eight footer, kangaroo hide. The heel knot and the wrist loop were uh, redone by Paul Nolan of Midwest Whips because Kirk's dog, Puppy at the time, chewed on the heel knot and chewed the, the, the leather off. He was able to use uh, excess leather um, that, was, that was chewed off and sourced, so there's a little bit of, there's still some bite marks underneath there, but this whip uh, sings, it's absolutely wonderful, and it's huge bragging rights to say that I personally have a vintage David Morgan, made by David Morgan, in my hands. Yeah. And speaking of what's in my hands, a very, very iconic Raiders prop. Uh, the Fertility Idol, an antique finish made by Dark Matter Props on Etsy. And this was actually a birthday gift from a Mr. Brian Long. So Brian, thank you again. Love this so much. And, uh, you know, I, I, I treasure this because it is a treasure and, I take, and I'm taking really good care of it. And uh, to conclude my belts, I have the What Price Glory gun belt, which I think is a very faithful replica to a Raiders belt oh, yeah. for a fraction of the cost. And then a general standard web belt from Amazon. So there you have it. That is my Raiders of the Lost Ark getup that I will be wearing. Whip holder? The whip holder! Oh my goodness. Thank you. The whip holder, there's so many things on this that you just completely yeah, you just completely forget about. This is actually a Franklin Pratt whip holder uh, that I got from Trent. Um, I had this whip holder before um, it, that it was commissioned by me and it was my own whip, but um, I was able to source this from Trent who uh, didn't see any uh, necessity in having this anymore, so now I'm giving it more life. So that concludes my Raiders outfit, and now without further ado, we have a Doomer. Yeah, for the first time ever, I am a I am a full-on doer cosplayer. We love it. We love so it. Um, I I will have to say I do need to thank Kirk for getting me into being a a doer. Yeah. Um, and this is actually a cosplay that uh, I've I've been building for a long while. Mm -hmm. um, some parts the same, other parts are different. Starting up top, we have a at Vintage Harrison from at Vintage Fedoras, which I've talked about before in my at Vintage Factory Hats then and now. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's more of a uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull bash, but because of the way that it's been, this was bought secondhand by Trent Ryan, and he had it for like two seconds, yeah. and then just sold it to me because he didn't like the way that it fit on his head. Right. Um, but there are a lot of elements of this that are very indicative of Temple of Doom, so I kind of call it my Temple Skull Hat. Yeah. Um, and I really do love this. This makes a wonderful, everyday Indiana Jones hat. Um, some very nice rabbit felt, or a, this might be a rabbit beaver mix. I don't actually know. When it comes to Ed Vintage hats, it, it's, it's really amazing, even when if it, if it is actually a rabbit felt hat. The way that it's pounced, Ed Vintage hats are just so wonderfully pounced and it makes it so, so, so incredibly soft. So soft. Um, borderline delicate if you really think about it, but they're so they're, they're so powerful in their tanks. Yeah, and there are so many folks in the indie community, both newbies and veterans, who love to go with the Harrison yeah. because it can take a beating. Right, right. Um, on top, I've talked about this, but I will talk about it again because it's just one of the best birthday presents I received from this guy and many others of the California slash Colorado Jones cosplay groups. This is my new Wested, vintage Wested, Temple of Doom jacket in authentic lamb. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the most comfortable jackets 
I have ever owned. It just picks up so wonderfully in certain lights. And yeah, like like that. There, are, there are times where I'm looking at this and it's a deep brown, almost like your Kelso. Yeah. But then right now, it's very much like the village scene, a kind of grayish black. Yeah. yeah. But it's so wonderful, and it's got that uh, poly nylon lining that yeah. is just very comfy, gets in and out really easily. Nice big copper, uh, copper, nickel zipper, right. French style. Yep. Uh, tiny pockets. That's something else I wanted to talk about is the difference between the Raiders and the Temple of Doom pockets. These tiny pockets. Yeah, you can hardly put your hand in this one. And the, the Temple of Doom pockets are um, are notorious for having very, very tiny space. So yeah. it's, it's hard to have any sort of um, hand room. But, um, but you know, at, at any rate, it's still a wonderful jacket. It's a wonderful jacket. It's lightly distressed. It is. And I would argue that it probably doesn't necessarily need any more distressing. Um, but, I mean, that's it's your jacket and it's your birthday present, so you do whatever you want. I might just lightly touch it up, maybe with a bit of uh, brown Picard. Right. And then just go over where it's already distressed so it brings out that nice copper tone. Yeah, no, it's just really nice. and. You know, it's. I, I was almost afraid that it was uh, a bit too dry, but it was. It's. It's on the drier side because of how vintage it is. Yeah. So. Um, if I wanted to, I could throw on a, like a tub of Picard and probably. Yeah. Bring it back to life. Absolutely. Um, but underneath the jacket, we have the standard "What Price Glory." I've been rocking these shirts since 2018 when I finally got my hands on one. They're great shirts, wonderful for the price, especially for a starter indie shirt if you can't. And you've also been working really hard and slimming down. Yeah. And you look great. So, so. that these fit better, because yeah. last time I wore this, it was a little tight. Um, the bag and bag strap or eBay finds, don't know the maker. This is uh, a vintage Mark 7 gas nose bag. I believe it is a. <sighs> not a WG. It's not a WG. It's, it's like a. a, a Ancient Ward or something. Ancient I, Ward. I, I specifically looked up a guide to the various makings of these gas mask bags and the insides and everything. And I came across one that was a patent from uh, late 1939, early 1940. And this seemed to, to match up pretty pretty well with color and inside detailings and stuff like that. But it's a wonderful bag. I love how dark green it is. Mm -hmm. It was much darker and a lot browner when I first got it but I've been wearing it so much that it's starting to lighten up now and just looks fantastic. Yeah, it's got a good fade. Forever rocking the Joe Strait whip because it's just a, it's a perfect whip. Right. Um, a crease and corral replica uh, whip holder made by Trent Ryan, uh, sitting on which is just a standard Amazon belt. I wish it was as nice as the what price belt, but you know what, for being 20 bucks, it's not bad. It's a beautiful belt. Uh, my holster is Franklin Pratt leather. Hey! Or sorry, Spade Archer leather. Spade Archer leather, okay. Um, this was given to me by uh, Trent Ryan in a trade, because the old holster I was rocking around with was a Mega Jones. Oh. That was given to me by Trent. I think I've seen that yet. Yeah, and oh, that's gorgeous. Uh, he, I was talking about how I, I didn't care for the floppiness of my Mega Jones holster. Yeah. And he's like, well, I've got this Spade Archer that I'm not intending to use anytime soon. Well, that's the thing about Spade Archer leather. When you get it, it's very, um, and, and I mentioned in other videos about leather, it's very stout. Yeah. And this is, yeah, incredibly stout and incredibly like, like my bag strap, for example, you know, uh, be, being that it was made by Spade Archer leather, it's a very thick leather, even though it probably doesn't look thick from here, but it's a very thick leather that, um, again, indicative of Spade Archer, but yeah. it's, it, you know that it's going to be built to last. Um, uh, I'm very much a, a late Templar dude, because I don't have a Webley, <laughs> so I can't fight off the swordsman. It's perfect. Uh, but this is a wonderful holster. I'm trying to get my hands on either a Denix or a resin yeah. uh, Webley just to stick in here. Uh, pants are L.L. Bean, also known as, I think, like Wolf Creek. Yes. Um, just some standard eBay pants that this guy helped me find. Very amazing close enoughs, and the, yeah. and the big thing is, is that it has the pocket flaps on it. And a, lot of, a lot of people don't, because it's such a strange detail, but Indy's pants have pocket flaps on both sides, and it's such a hard detail to find with a lot of modern pants. But these L.L. Bean pants are really nice. They're not as dark as I would like them to be, like his pants, but I'm sure I can throw them in the wash and maybe dye them. Easy. Yeah, so uh, still rocking my Bostonians. Yes. A perfect... Uh, match for Temple of Doom and Last Crusade, especially the Last Crusade. Yeah. 
and they and they just uh, lowered their price on Amazon. So if you're interested in a close enough pair of Aldens, um, or uh, you know, close enough pair that look like Aldens that are Bostonians, uh, highly recommend going. I because I've been wearing these for almost a year and a half now, and yeah. uh, they still look the same as when I got them out of the box. Amazing. So. Yeah. Um, Anything else on me that I have not talked about? Yeah, that's, that's yeah that's I don't it. I had I had a Sankara stone that I meant to bring, but I forgot to bring it, so here you can hold on to this. Oh, that's great. Yeah. It'd be like a multiverse sort of thing. No spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers, man. No spoilers. <laughs> um, should we talk about the uh, the event that's coming up? Yes. So May twenty second, two thousand and twenty two, here at the old LA Zoo. We of the California Jones Cosplay Group are going to be holding our third full-on Indiana Jones event. Uh, we're going to be starting it at noon, and we're going to be hanging out here, just having a good time, cracking whips, uh, hanging out in gear, talking gear for other people's videos like Isaac of Elias and Whip Company, uh, Russell of Rusty Bull Whips and his wonderful videos, and we're just we're going to have a wonderful time. If you're in the uh, LA, California area, please come on down. It's a free event for anyone who wants to come. And uh, yeah, we're just hoping to have some fun. Yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at uh, California Jones 81 on Instagram, or you can find the California Jones Cosplay Group on Facebook. Correct, correct. So we hope to see you there. Thank you again so much for a uh, wonderful show until Saturday. And uh, we hope to see you at the event. Fortune and glory, kid. Fortune and glory.